Hello, I'm Billy, and welcome to Sidelick Town. Today in Sidelick Town, we'll see what happens to Oscar at the Grease Galley. And then help Billy with his shapes. But first, there's a big storm on its way. Early one morning, the sky was darkening over Sidelick Town. This is one bad storm, said Billy. No kidding, commented Jeff. It's not just a storm, it's a hurricane, and one of the fiercest of the season, too. What do we do? asked Billy. For now, just stay calm, replied Timmy. Hopefully, we'll just get a light drizzle. But I haven't even finished shopping. And Timmy was wrong. While they hid outside of the grease galley during the light storm, they had no chance but to hurry inside when the strong winds and rain came. Hurry! Everyone, hurry! shouted Corey. They were all hiding in the kitchen. It was a little chilly, but it was better than being soaked. Soon the licks were very bored, so Corey told them a story. I remember one hurricane some years ago. It was named Hurricane Tommy. It ripped my house's roof off. It destroyed the nearby market, and the roads were flooded. I'm guessing this is where Tommy got his name, joked Jeff. Hey, I'm not named after a hurricane, cried Tommy. He's right, said Timmy. The hurricane was named after him. Tell them to stop, Corey. I know they should stop, began Corey. But the reason they're saying that is that you sort of are mean and fierce like a hurricane. Thanks a lot, Corey, groaned Tommy. Maybe we should change the subject. I know, Jeff said. Let's tell stories about each other. The other day, I was doing laundry, and Billy... Jeff's voice trailed off. He felt very nervous. Has anyone seen Billy? he asked. I didn't see him since before the storm hit, replied Timmy. Didn't he say he had to finish shopping? asked Ray. Oh, no, screamed Jeff. Billy's stuck in the strongest hurricane of the year. What should we do? We are not doing anything. I'm going out there to rescue him, insisted Tommy. Please don't, cried Timmy. Those winds will sweep you up instantly. I want to show you that I'm not the icy lick you think. I want to save him. Fine, as long as you know what you're doing, I trust you, Corey said. With that, Tommy bravely set out. The town was already beginning to flood. Billy and his car were stuck in the mud. Help! Somebody, please! Billy screamed. Keep calm, Billy. I'll be right there. With all his strength, Tommy pushed the cart out of the puddle. Then he helped Billy inside. When he returned, everyone cheered. I'm so glad you're safe, Jeff told Billy. I'm so glad I'm out of that rain, agreed Billy. Well, Tommy, I'm impressed, said Corey. I guess you're not the self-centered brute like we all thought you were. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Tommy, Billy said. Think nothing of it. As long as you stop calling me Hurricane Tommy. Yep, that's our Tommy, chuckled Timmy. Everyone in there shared a good laugh, and they happily talked until the storm cleared. Today, Billy is identifying the shapes of Sidelick Town. There are lots of different shapes. See if you can guess all the shapes Billy sees. First, he notices Corey's head. It's a round shape. Do you know its name? That's right. Corey's head is a circle. Now, what shape is the timeout bench? When Billy looks directly at it, he sees a shape with four sides. Do you know what that shape is called? Yes. The timeout bench is a square. Billy notices one more shape. He sees several of this shape on Tommy's magic curtain. Do you know what that shape's name is? Yes, that's right. It's a star. Billy has had lots of fun learning the shapes of the world. Now he's off to find more shapes. See you soon, Billy. Today, Oscar is coming back to Sidelick Town. 
He had been on a long job at the factory. Tori, his uncle, was happy to see him back. Welcome back, Oscar, he said. Now, before you begin today, I'd like to warn you to control your anger. Your temper is what put you in the factory in the first place. Don't let things get to you, and you'll do all right. Now go get some need at the grease galley. Yes, sir, replied Oscar. Oscar walked over to the grease galley. Hello, Mac, he said. I'll have a bucket of chicken, please. Coming right up, buddy, said Mac. Oscar reached into the hot chicken. But the first piece of chicken he pulled out was actually two stuck together. Oscar was surprised. What is this? Oops, I suppose the breading got stuck when I cooked those. I want a refund, whined Oscar. But it's only one piece, replied Mac. Besides, I'm sure it tastes as fine as the others. You're lying, snapped Oscar. I'll bet it's contaminated, and it's already spread its nastiness to the others. I'm sorry, Oscar, said Mac. I'm not giving you a refund. Oscar lost control there. He tossed the chicken strip to the ground, and he stomped on it and stomped on it until it was just crumbs. Then he stormed away. Your uncle will hear about this, muttered Mac. But Oscar didn't care. He was mad. He soon found his cousin, Nick. He took his anger out on him and shoved him to the ground. What was that for? shouted Nick. I'm just having a bad day, and you're the closest one to me, snorted Oscar. Nick was speechless. He just watched as Oscar continued his rage. Then, for no apparent reason, he insulted Jeff, Ray, and Billy one at a time. Oh, groaned Billy. What a horrid side lick. Just before Oscar was going to pick a fight with Ray, Corey arrived. What is going on? cried Corey. I'll tell you, Max said. Just because Oscar got a strangely shaped piece of chicken, he's been harming everyone in town with that temper. I say send him back to the factory. That brought Oscar back into reality. Suddenly, he feared returning to the bustle of the factory. Well, Oscar, I kind of agree, murmured Corey. Wait, Uncle Corey, screamed Oscar. I'm sorry for teasing Jeff, Ray, and Billy. I'm sorry for pushing Nick. I'm sorry for overreacting to the chicken strip. But please, don't send me back to the factory. Corey thought. Hmm. Perhaps I'll give you a second chance. Oh, thank you, sir, said Oscar. But you'll still be punished for today, he added. Oscar waited, and later met Corey at the timeout bench. You're a very naughty sidelick, Corey told him. I hope I can trust you to behave tomorrow. After hearing that, I'm sure Oscar will. When tomorrow came, Oscar was in a much better mood. He apologized to everyone he was mean to, and he even volunteered to help out a bit. Corey was very impressed. I never thought you'd be perfectly behaved for a whole day, chortled Corey. Let's just hope it lasts. Don't worry, Oscar reassured. It will.